Do you have a vitamin D deficiency? Probably not. And yet the messaging that many of us have received for a long time is that substantial portions of the population may be vitamin D deficient. Now, that's not really true and we need to unpack why that's the case. Firstly, vitamin D has gone a bit of, undergone a bit of a reversal of fortunes in the past few years. In the early 2000s, it was kind of viewed as a potential panacea, that there'd be lots of application and it had huge health benefits. But recent analysis, meta-analysis and more evidence that we've got simply suggests that vitamin D doesn't do a whole heap if you already have enough in your diet. Um, if you are not malnourished, you usually have enough in your diet and we don't see any excess health benefits. We haven't seen it for cardiovascular disease or cancer or any of the other conditions. Actually, recent Cochrane reviews have found no benefit for a whole range of conditions, some of which I just list here in the corner to save time. So where does the deficiency issue come up? Well, if you're deficient, there has to be a standard by which you're being compared to. There has to be some threshold. And you might go, what is the threshold? Well, there's about 11 of them. Yeah, it, it's a messy, confusing scenario. Different countries have different thresholds. Where do they come from? They're kind of arbitrary. You need a very small amount of vitamin D to not get nutritional diseases. But most of us get that in diet. Where we started trying to work out the other levels of deficiency, it gets very, very messy. For example, in countries like Ireland and the US, the usual quoted number for deficiency is 20 nanograms per milliliter. In the UK and France, it's 10. In some countries, it's 30. In other countries, it's 8. And in some, it's 12. There's over 11 standards. We looked at this recently in a preprint. How many arbitrary standards are there for vitamin D deficiency? And there's a bit of a problem with this too. Because how can you say that people in Ireland are deficient at 20 when our UK neighbours would only be considered deficient at 10. Do we have vastly different health outcomes? No, what about our US neighbors at 30? No. Something funny is going on and the history of this gets really interesting. Now, as a chartered statistician, there's something I hate and that's called dichotomizing a continuous variable. The idea that we go from being sufficient to deficient and there's some very well-defined cutoff point is kind of a fiction. In fact, it's really a fiction. Serum vitamin D levels are a continuous variable. They shouldn't be dichotomized into low and high, but yet we've done it. And in medicine, that's really common. People love telling you this is a good level, this is a bad level. In fact, it's a continuum. So statistics problem 101. Where you draw that cutoff line matters hugely because it changes the proportion of your population you're going to say are deficient or non-deficient. So we looked at that very recently in this preprint. Um, and that is... Interest results, I'll show just a little graph here of some of this stuff. So you can see the amount of standards that are put out there. Now, some of them are obviously typos because they'd be insane, but there's a lot of variance. How does this make any sense? Well, the answer is it doesn't, right? These standards are arbitrary. We also looked at the quality of research in this area and it is poor. Firstly, this is a big no-no. We shouldn't be dichotomizing continuous variables for a lot of reasons because it's misleading. But if we look at the history of where these standards came from, there was a huge debate. There's a great piece in Scientific American earlier on this year, not one of mine, but it was an excellent deep dive into the weird history of vitamin D. And again, it was done in the light of the fact that a lot of the initially promising research on vitamin D has come to nothing. It pointed out that the standards, the very high standards that are used in America and indeed Ireland, actually come from a contested source. It was a guideline in 2011 from the American Endocrine Society who suddenly came out and came up with a standard that 30 nanograms per milliliter was sufficient, between 20 and 30 was insufficient, and less than 20 was deficient. Where did they come up with that number? Not from data. They were very quickly challenged on that by the Institute of Medicine. However, the chair of the Endocrine Society at the time had authored three very successful books on why vitamin D was the bee's knees and also had shares in a company that sold vitamin D supplements. And that was back in 2011. So even though it was, that was a contested standard, it percolated into the literature. Is it a realistic standard? No. Currently, the American Endocrine Society are revisiting that. I highly encourage you to read the Scientific American piece if you want a deep dive. But this is a really good example of why these standards, and when you see influencers saying, you're vitamin D deficient, the answer is, well, by what standard 
and probably not. Um, if you don't have rickets, you're probably not deficient. If you're eating a relatively balanced diet, you're probably not deficient. We don't find any benefit from vitamin D supplementation. In fact, we don't find any benefit from non-directed supplementation in general. But that's not the messaging you'll get online where you're told this is the most important stuff in the world. And I often find when influencers say this, I want to challenge them and just say, uh-huh, by what standard? Now, if you think this reflects poorly on the quality of academic research in the area, you would be right. Again, my other job is a meta-researcher. I spend a lot of my time looking at other people's research and my own research and going, what is the quality like? What is the evidence for that? And often the answer is it's terrible and it's poorly conducted by people that often already believe their own outcomes or sometimes, as we've seen here, have a vested interest in a standard changing. So, yeah, you can probably relax. Unless your GP or your doctor tells you you have a deficiency and it has a medical implication... Take everything with a pinch of salt.